Hello you awesome boys and girls, I'm Anthony aka Mad Wizard and welcome back to the workshop and today we are going to do a kitchen knife, a Japanese kitchen knife, one known as a Nekiri, I think if that's what it's called, um, apologies if the pronunciation is wrong, but yes, we are going to do a kitchen knife, I've been wanting to do a kitchen knife for ages now and now I finally get the opportunity to make one, but also this is my first ever collaboration video, yes, I am making this knife, not just for myself but also for a good friend of mine called John I say he's got a Instagram page and Etsy page called JB Woodturning or JB Woodwork as I say go check him out some of his stuff is absolutely phenomenal but he's doing some work for me and uh, as a big thank you I'm doing a knife for him yes but also because this is a collaboration video I'm doing the knife part and he's gonna do the handle part so make sure that after you watching this video you go check him out on Instagram and check out his Etsy and uh, yeah you can see what the knife turned out like yes so basically this is going to be uh, a sort of cleaver ish sort of looking knife um, as I say normally a kitchen knife has got like a pointy edge or sort of like there's many many different types of knife uh, like throughout the world and uh, but this is sort of like a Japanese style cleaver so to speak so I mean it's more boxy it's more square but it's used for uh, chopping and getting through sort of like lots and lots of um, things uh, quite quickly so really looking forward to getting started on it cannot wait to see how it turns out and uh, yeah just really looking forward to the project so no time like the present let's do this thing So to first get started on the knife I'm going to need some steel and I'm going to use this, yes. So this is a nice piece of 01 tool steel that I got from GFS Knife Supplies. As I say, I'm not being sponsored, I'm just a fan, that's their website if you want to check them out. But this is a piece of 01 tool steel, it's 4mm thick by 80mm wide by 50mm length. Um, and as I say, we should get a nice good cleaver out of this. Um, as I say, I've worked with O1 before, it's a really, really nice um, high carbon steel to work towards. Uh, I've used it for many projects in the past and I just really, really like it. So I know it's definitely gonna be strong enough to do what we want to do with it. So the old question arises, do we do stock removal or do we forge out the blade? Well, I say to those people, why not do both? So that's a sort of semi sort of shape I'm going to cut out. So the idea is what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this out with the angle grinder just to give me a blank. Then what I'm going to do is then I'm going to put it in the forge and I'll say I'm going to forge out the, the bevels. Might just change the angle of the handle just so it looks a bit nicer and probably hammer in the spine a bit more maybe cut this out but then forge it back in same with this as I say just to tidy up so basically stock removal to get the blank then forge it out just to finalize some of the shape and then as I say then we'll just put it back on the grinder just to uh, get it all sorted mm.
So there it is, all roughly cut out and ground to shape. And she's looking amazing. I think she's going to be a really, really nice chopper. So, the more eagle-eyed viewer amongst you will probably be looking at this and saying, hang on a minute, that's not a Japanese handle. That's a more sort of European sort of handle shape. And you are right, it is. But, as I say, uh, the illustrations that I've been supplied um, all have this sort of design and also this sort of handle. It's quite nice. I actually prefer this sort of handle over a pure straight handle, as I say, because I quite like the... Uh, bump stop at the back and also it sort of fits the curvature of your hand a hell of a lot better as well so yeah that's why we're going with one of those handles so time to get her in the forge and start forging out the bevels and all the lovely lovely nice stuff mmm decorative hammer pattern on the blade. Just to give it a bit of design to show it's been hand forged. Also slightly strengthen it as well. You'll see that it's actually starting to curve a bit, but that doesn't matter because we can straighten that out something a bit later. But if I just show you there, see if I can get in the camera, I'm trying to do it upside down, but yeah, you see there, just putting that hammered pattern in it so I've just got to do the other side and keep going and then we can forge in the bevels then
So, I don't know if you can see that. Sorry, I'm doing everything upside down here, but uh, what I'm doing... Let's see if I can get that that way, yep. So, it's a lot thinner, obviously, down the edge than it is on the spine. So, we'll do that on the other side. And, uh, yeah be nearly done. So what I've done is I've heated it up to a red heat and I've plunged it straight into sand. This is just play sand or silica sand and uh, I'm going to let it cool down slowly and the reason being for this is that I want to do a lot of hand uh, filing work and uh, by letting it cool down slowly it annuls the steel so that it's a bit softer to work with so at the moment we've forged it out to shape so now we need to do some hand sanding to this but I'm gonna let it cool down because it's still red hot and uh, it probably will take about I don't know maybe an hour or two to fully cool down so I can touch it so uh, yeah I'm gonna make a cup of tea and we'll see how this came out So what I've done is I've just run the blade through a couple of normalising cycles so now I've just got the heat quenching oil to temperature, I just put a rod in there just to heat it up so now as I say I'm just bringing it up to critical temperature which basically means that the blade is non-magnetic anymore and as I say I'm going to quench it in the oil and hopefully that should harden it. So fingers crossed it all goes well so uh, let's see what happens. What you want is a nice even heat throughout the whole blade. So that's what I'm doing, just checking to make sure that there's a nice even heat throughout the whole blade. I've got my magnet set up down here as well so I can check that it's non-magnetic. And then once it's non-magnetic it's going to go straight into that. So, yeah that's nice and warm. Okay, here we go. Yep. So that's it all quenched up. So I've just left it in the vice horizontal um, so that the steam that comes off of it, it won't warp either side. But I don't know if you can hear that or not, but uh, I'll say there's a slight resonance. Don't know if that I can pick that up on the camera. Right, if I get in close. Don't know if you can hear that. Don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but uh, looks pretty straight to me. Awesome. Yep, seems hard to me. So, what I need to do now is I need to do something called uh, tempering. So basically what that means is um, 
Uh, if you think of like the metal molecules and stuff like that, after I've dipped it into the oil, basically when they're all hot, they're all sort of loose like that. And when I dunked it into the oil, they've gone like that. So they're nice and strong and uh, sort of like tightly packed together. But the problem is, is um, when it does that, it's slightly brittle. Uh, well, because it's so tight together, I say it can make the blade very, very brittle. So to counteract that you have to do something called tempering so I'm just heating up my oven now to um, about 200 C and uh, I'm going to leave that in there for an hour or until it goes uh, straw colour and once it goes straw colour basically it just allows the molecules to just slightly relax a bit more still be strong but they they're not so compacted together so that they have a bit more breathing room so to speak so i think my ovens now come up to temperature so let's stick that in there we'll give it an hour right come back in an hour and uh Hopefully she's done. So there's still a lot more to do on the knife. I say what I'm going to do is I'm going to eventually polish this to a nice mirror finish. I say you can sort of see me. Hello. Hello. But uh, I want to try and get out all of these scratches if I can. And I really want to make it look nice and I need to blacken this. But anyway, what I've also decided to do as a little optional extra thing is that I've been cutting out these little brass pieces here and I'm gonna either pin or weld them on there to make a little cross guard sort of thing so obviously the handle will go on here but this will be just a nice little decorative uh, sort of bit on the front I'll say and then you'll have a nice wooden handle and I've also got some brass rod here that I'm gonna drill some holes and make some pins and yeah I think that is gonna look Awesome! Starting to look good.
So I've got a bit of a confession to make. As you were seeing, my original plan uh, for the little brass piece that I was putting on there, I was going to weld uh, it onto the spine or the handle of the blade, sort of like the top and bottom. Um, however, unfortunately, as I've uh, just, I was doing some, um, just playing around with it, like, you know, just to make sure that the welds were taken and they were fine and that, um, unfortunately, they didn't take and uh, they weren't very, very strong and um, I just wasn't happy and I've just been mucking about with it, trying to sort it out and literally it's just not working. So I've had to put my thinking cap on and I've had a bit of a play around and I've come up with this. Uh, so basically, as you saw in the previous video, I was threading a piece of... Um, brass rod that I've got over here and uh, what I've done is I've drilled a couple of holes and I've actually pinned it into place as you can see there so is this a tight joint uh, yes it's very strong like you know I can't see this coming apart um, and I actually prefer it. it actually looks quite nice it actually looks more handmade and as I say once I sand all of this down or say you won't see it i might have to just do a bit of um fine tuning on sort of like the peened bits um but yeah once this is all sanded down i say you won't be able to see it and it's lined up quite nicely so yeah so basically yeah that was pretty much it uh we've had to basically throw the welding brazing whatever you want to call it out of the window and uh we're going with tacks or uh, pinned joints instead so this is also threaded as well so basically drilled tapped um, and then as I say they're screwed in and then pinned over so that it's not going to go anywhere so uh, she's looking really really good so just a bit more sanding a bit more polishing up and uh, yeah also as you saw I drilled some holes in there so yeah should be good. She's looking awesome. Look at that. Mmm. Okay, so now we're on to one of the final jobs of the blade. As I say, it's looking absolutely awesome. So now, all we've got to do now is do some sanding. And sanding. And sanding. And there was one more thing. Uh, oh yeah, and...
So here she is, all done. Oh, she has come out beautiful. The Nakiri. As I say, I think it's Nakiri. Um, but yeah, I just love the polish on here. So, so shiny. And this cross guard bit, fantastic. Oh, this has come out so, so well. And it's razor sharp as well. So anyway... As the old saying goes, looks a secondary to performance, so time for some glamour shots and uh, we'll see what this baby can do. So, cue the music. So, you thought the video was over? No, no, no. I say we've got a little bit extra. So, we've got an unboxing. Yes. So, this I've been waiting for a very, very long time. So, been looking forward to this. So, this I think is uh, come uh, from my mate John. As I say, JB would turn in. As I say, please do go check him out. As I say, links to his Instagram and his Etsy will be in the description box below. But as I say, he was doing, I'm doing the knife for him. And as I say, he's gonna put on the handle. So if you wanna see how the knife turned out, go check him out. And as I say, I'm pretty sure I'll have pictures and that up. But also I've asked him to do a little job for me as well, which I believe is in here. So I'm oh, so looking forward to this. So yes, we get to unbox it as well. So we get a little extra unboxing video at the end. So let's open it and see, see what it is. Oh, this is going to be so good. So as I say, I'm hoping it's come from John, right? I can't think I've ordered anything else. So, uh, I think this is the right way to open it. Yeah. Okay, I think that's all open all the way around. Oh, there we go. Yeah. I 
think it's open now. Just a final bit. Yep, there we go. Right, cool. So, let's see what's inside. I think this is what I, I, I've been waiting for. I think this is what it is. <laughs> oh, this is going to be awesome. Oh, here we go. Right, so here it is. Uh, Let's see. Oh, yes. Oh, 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 oh. oh yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> that's fantastic. Oh, oh, that's come out so well. Oh, and he's got some business cards as well. Yes, brilliant, brilliant. Oh, oh, John, thank you so much. This is awesome. This is exactly what I've been waiting for. So, right, I'll show, show you guys. There we are. Look at that. So, this is going to be a beer mug so I'm going to turn this into a beer mug uh, so this should hold at least a good pint's worth of beer, cider, home brew whatsoever but what I'm going to do is I've got him, uh, John, to do all the woodwork for me and I'm going to do like some metal work I'm going to put like a hand forged handle on here and I'm going to do some detailing and decorative work and oh wow John John thank you so so much and look even on the bottom check that out on the bottom as well look at that say so JB Woodwork and Mad Wizard Studios yes how awesome is that and it's all different all the different woods in there fantastic this is going to be awesome so so much Oh, that's brilliant. As I say, this is going to be... Oh, that smell. I just love fresh wood. I don't know. It's just... Oh, it's so amazing. But yes, John, I cannot thank you enough for this. This is absolutely brilliant. As I say, do go check him out. Um, yeah, and as I say, I uh, hope you enjoyed the video, guys. If you did like the video, do give us a big thumbs up down at the bottom of the screen there. It really helps the channel out. And, of course, subscribe if you are new to the channel um, so you don't miss an episode. Um, yeah, uh, don't forget to check us out on Instagram and Facebook uh, just to get regular updates on what it is that I'm doing. And, yeah, until next time, see ya. Bye.